millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Hey friends, Shauna here, and I discovered a secret a long time ago that I really want to let you in on, the power of therapy. Not only for things like relationships or anxiety or depression, but also for things like money. Why do I keep doing what I'm doing or not do what I know I should do? So in this episode, I head straight to the therapy couch with Terry Ladau to find out how you can heal your habits, your heart, and your mind, and even spur on some money mental fitness. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Come to Game, where we flip the script on the old school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. I am no stranger to therapy, and I've talked about it very openly on this show. Counseling or therapy or whatever you want to call it has been a complete game changer for me and something that really helped me get in a good relationship with myself, most importantly. But then also my husband, my career, my dreams, my goals, my money, and so much more. So we couldn't do a month about mindset and wellness without talking about therapy and counseling. I've known Terry for a few years now, and he's got this tough but lovable approach and brings with him years of experience of getting through some really tough things in his own life. So this episode is for you, whether you are new to therapy, a regular like myself, or just looking for some good tips for how you can bring in new habits this year and get in a better relationship with yourself and your money. So I hope this conversation with Terry sparks something in you and reminds you that you can overcome anything, my friend. So I'm sitting in the in the spot on the couch that probably like most people have in their head when they think about therapy. I don't know where the oh, there's the tissue box. Okay, we've, we've yes. got the tissue box. So Terry, it is so great to have you on the show. Uh, I know you're going to dispel so much wisdom. And stories and people are going to be listening going, wait, wait a minute. How long have I been listening? But it's all going to be worth it. So, Okay. (laughs) So we're devoting the entire month to money mindset, money wellness, this concept. Obviously, I felt like we couldn't do this month without doing an episode around therapy. 
therapy's really been like a cornerstone for me, particularly in the last like 10 years or so, going through our things, going through divorce and miscarriage and getting remarried. And I mean, you you sort of name it depression. I mean, therapy's really been a place for me that, you know, my as my childhood, we didn't talk about therapy. We didn't talk about how are you doing on, you know, you know, was maybe how are you feeling? But there were, really wasn't any depth behind my thoughts and feelings. And I think that you can feel really lost. But I know there's like the scariness too about therapy that a lot of people are afraid to to try therapy. So, I mean, just break it down to us. Like, what what is therapy all about? Therapy in its simplistic form is you, the person who's dealing with issues, uh, find somebody who can help them sort those issues out. Now, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, it depends on what kind of issues you're dealing with, um, the, the intensity, the level, the impact. Um, but therapy, the, the idea of therapy is to help people um, unload, if you will, and and put things down that are that are managing their life for them instead of them being able to make choices that are healthy. Right. So therapy is 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 um, it's a big statement, and because it's not a thing. When you talked about money management, um, people come in here with addictions, and they spend money. Right. So is is there problem spending money? And the answer is yes, no. <laughs> yes, no is everything, right? Yes, <laughs> in in many ways, because when when somebody comes in, um, and and they're just using money for the, for this example, um, you, you're talking about somebody that's getting something from spending money, not not doing something wise with their money, right? So but it's a temporary sort of like, condition, like impulse, right? Impulse buying. Getting, right? I, if I have, um, I mean, there's there's people that I've worked with who. If you went in their closet, um, there's rows of clothing with tags still on them. They'd never been worn. They didn't take them back. But it's that feeling of buying that thing. It's It, it helped me with whatever pain I have, it, with every issues that I'm dealing with. Going to the store took my mind off it, for example. Mm. And if I can find um, something that moves me away from what's causing me the conflict, the pain, the uncomfortableness, whatever that is, that becomes my vehicle, if you will. So therapy, the idea of therapy is to go um, back uh, to a better place or create a better place where you are now. So we're trying to make it, keep it simple, better. Better. (laughs) It's like, sounds funny, but that's really what we're trying to do. The idea of of long-term therapy and counseling and, and, and coaching are similar in their um, ideas, and that is to help people be more um, capable, more productive, more engaged, involved in in life itself. So, I don't know. Is that a good enough answer for you? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, for people who maybe haven't been to therapy, like what happens typically in an hour long therapy session? There's different approaches. There's, um, you know, the typical. There's the couch. Um, tell me what's on your mind. I won't. I won't say anything. I'll just sit here and wait for you to to talk. Psychotherapy. Uh, there's there's therapy in which there's something's going to happen and there's a planned process that's involved. Um, therapy can start um, depending on. I'm I'm considered a behaviorist in in my therapeutic model, and what that means is I want to know kind of what's happened to you. Yeah. Because that is important. Right. Yeah. But the question that that is more important to me is, okay, now that we've kind of identified, what do you want to do with that? Because you have each day you have the opportunity to change your mind. I think that's really interesting because that's something that I think a lot of people get stuck in. Well, how how can I change my behavior? How can I change my mind? Like I try a million times to maybe not go by that impulse buy when I'm depressed or when I'm frustrated with my partner, but I go do it anyway. So is there is there any like practical t- like how do people course, actually walk course, this out? Of course there is. 
Uh, and I'm going to tell you that d- do not think that simple and easy are the same word. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I so, echo that. Okay. Um, because people say, well, that's too simple or that's simple. It's like, it may be simple in its description or its ex- explanation, but in the, in, the, in the reality of doing it, the execution of it is not simple. Uh, I drank for 38 years. Started drinking when I was seven, eight years old, quit when I was 45. How did I stop at 45? Well, I just said I quit drinking. Didn't happen. Right. Yeah. I had to get around people who walked with me. I had people in my life. I had counselors. I had a lot of help. A team around you. I did yeah. because I need a team. Don't we all? Uh, I think so. I think yeah. that's, I think that little statement you made is a huge statement because what we see in people a lot is isolation. I think especially, I mean, I guess you could say this anytime, but I, I feel it more now, more than ever, especially with social media and oh yeah, there's so many distractions. I think that you can really, you can isolate yourself from just I will tell anything. you an absolute mind boggling story for me. I was in yogurt land near our house. Good, good place. It is a wonderful <laughs> place. There's something therapeutic about very therapeutic yes, yogurt land. And uh, and as I was waiting to 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 pay, and there was these two kids, obviously teenagers, sitting at a table texting. Well, I didn't think too much of it, you know. It's like, oh yeah, they're doing that stuff. And but I heard them go, really, huh? Okay, wow, and just. These comments that didn't really make any sense, but I thought, oh, they're just. Whatever. Yeah. The girl put her phone down, looked at the guy and said, I can't believe that. That's you. can't. That's not. And they were texting to each other. (laughs) Okay. You laugh. Uh, But I know it's true. The problem with that is that if you want to talk about the disconnection, the isolation, I mean, we're in the same place two feet apart and we can't have a conversation. Okay. If, if, if you don't have the ability to connect with people, what do you have? And typically it's not going to be good. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're going to oh. do something because my belief system says that God created us as, as relational people. You know, we, we want people in our life. We, we want, we want connection. Yeah, I mean, I feel like at our deepest core, that's that's what we long for. Even and you can look at kids who maybe have like what you might classify as behavioral issues, and really, it's a cry to right. to connect, be with me, see me, hear me, whatever that might be. So the 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 need for connection is also very terrifying. It's very scary because what if you reject me? There was a book written a lot of years ago with a great title and it's a good book. And it's, why am I afraid to tell you who I am? And the question says, okay, well, if I tell you who I am and you don't like it or you don't accept it, now what? Because now being rejected, abandoned, and we talk about this in therapy. These are all sure, yeah. conversations in therapy. So if if I'm not good enough for you, now what? And does that desire to... Because I think we all innately have it, that desire to be liked by whoever, your your boss, your spouse, your mom, your sister, whoever that is, that desire innately for them to to like who you are as a person. Is that just built into all of us, but maybe we let that override? Needing needing affirmation, needing approval, needing recognition that I do matter is is within every one of us. Um, the 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 interesting thing is what we do to get approval. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. There's where the can of worms. <laughs> so, and if I don't get approved of, I mean, when I was drinking, I would do some incredibly stupid things to get approval. Now that I've been in this industry now for about 27 years, um. I've I've learned that my value, my significance, who I am, isn't built on performance. But I want to be liked. I want to be approved of. I want people to say, I, "You're you're good in what you do." But you're also I, I like being around you. 
And if, if people want to be around you, there's a reason for it. If it's a healthy relationship, why are they want to be around you? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're married. Yes. Okay. Why do you want to stay married to the guy? Because he does some really dumb things. <laughs> I know him, so it's okay to say that. <laughs> You know, we are in therapy, so yes. you know. <laughs> so what happens is that, in spite of, and that's that's what happens um, in 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 a, what I consider a healthy relationship is I care about you in spite of, because you do dumb things. Well, so do I, and it's okay to say that's not okay, and it's okay to go ask somebody what how do we do this differently. As a money manager, people come to you and say, "How do we do this differently? Why isn't that a good thing?" Because what you're doing is therapy. So then where do you think the fear comes for therapy? Because I know when I first started to go to therapy was when I was going through, right before I was going through a divorce, my ex-husband and I went to therapy. And I can remember sharing with my parents that I was going to go see a therapist. And they were supportive, but there was still this, even the verbiage around Mm -hmm. it was, there was a negative connotation. Like, okay, now you're broke. There's right. something wrong with you. Yes. And it it made me feel not dirty, but it just made me feel like, okay, now I've failed. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm no longer Shauna, you know, right. achiever, whatever, whatever. I, right. You know, and so I would imagine that most people have some sort of st- therapy, story therapy, about that. Yes, it's true. When, when, I, when I quit drinking 30 years ago. AA was something you didn't broadcast. You went to meetings. You worked with, you worked a program to get sober. You You didn't tell anybody. But you didn't tell people because they would say something's wrong with you. You know, and, and as a male, males are supposed to figure it out by themselves. Oh yeah. You're supposed to come with the how-to book. I'm supposed to know everything. And, um, you know, and, and it's such a dumb statement uh, but the expectations that we put on ourselves and they're supported by other people, like you were saying, it's like, well, OK, you could go to counseling, but and they didn't have to say much else. You took in your head and ran with it and turned a it a million into, different ways. Yeah. yeah. So the, the the problem with therapy is in the past, it was you're you're broken, you're defective. There's something wrong with you. Um, I think it's interesting. Michael Phelps is doing. For, um, yeah. It's like, I went to therapy, you ought to go too. Yeah. Because um, therapy, if I said to you, think of it this way. If I said to you, you're not going to go to therapy, but you're going to go to coaching to learn how to do it better. That would be different. Most people would be like, all right, yeah, sign me up. Okay. Well, guess what therapy is? Same thing. Uh, Pretty much. (laughs) Okay. The vast majority. Now, there are times when therapy is is pretty serious stuff uh, because we're working with some severely damaged people. But generally speaking, therapy is more about how do we help you move forward? You know, let's look at the history and say, okay, that's what it was then. Now, how do you do that now is nothing more than coaching. Now, that's a simplistic explanation, but it's very effective. Because uh, if I, if, if you want to learn how to do something differently, what do you do? You have to go find someone to teach you how to do it differently. It's Tuesday, so let's tackle another Ask Shauna. This one is from Connor. Connor says, hi, I have a question about debt. I had a very unhealthy relationship with both my biological mother and a past partner. My mother opened a credit card in my name. I've since paid that off via a portfolio recovery. My ex-partner also was very financially abusive. He maxed out two of my credit cards. If I had not purchased things necessary in his mind, I would be physically assaulted. This was a very unhealthy time, and I've since removed myself from it and have a very healthy relationship. I want to start cleaning up my credit from that past relationship and a car loan I took out that was a very poor decision when I was 19. I applied for a debt consolidation loan, but was denied due to my credit score I now carry. I take responsibility for even allowing these cards to be maxed and the poor car purchase. I am absolutely clueless as how to start paying off this debt. These accounts are past due by over 60 days. 
a lot more. My credit score is very poor. Last time I checked, about 563. I'm trying to be very open as this is a very helpless time I feel. Any advice or help would be amazing. Your podcast has been helping me tremendously and helping me attempt to get to a healthy fiscal life. Well, Connor, my heart goes out to you. Being in a relationship where there was some sort of abuse around money is unfortunately a really common common thing. I hear this story or a version of the story a lot, and it is absolutely a terrible position to be in, but I'm really happy that you're in a very good relationship now and that that is not a component of it, but I know that you still have to spend some time doing cleanup of the situation you were in, and there might be somebody else that's listening who really resonates with this as well. So I'm really, really thankful that you submitted this question and for your honesty because something like this I know uh, can really help a lot of people. So last month, we had a great guest on the show. His name was Michael Bovey. He was from a company called Resolve. And I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you reach out to him. I don't receive anything if you do. I don't receive anything for saying his name. But from what I do know is you really need to talk to someone that is a true expert in this area and someone that handles issues like this every day. Because it's not just about coming up with a debt payoff plan like, okay, I'm going to find extra money in my bank account. I'm going to put it towards this credit card, et cetera. In your situation, it's a little bit more extreme. And I don't say that in a negative way, but you really need somebody who does this day in and day out to give you concrete advice and to look at your particular situation. So I'm going to pop a link to the episode that I did with Michael in the show notes in case you missed it. But I learned so much from him about all of the different debt relief options that I didn't even know existed. So Anyone can schedule a no-cost, no-sales-focused, one-on-one phone consult in order to get more detail and feedback about your situation. Or you can just easily go online on their website and build a user profile and get Michael's feedback without even scheduling a call. So there are lots of easy, easy ways to go about this. And then I'm also going to pop a link in the show notes from a great article on Resolve that talks about different ways to negotiate debt with credit card companies. Whether you choose to use a company to help you or you choose to do some of this yourself, I think the more information and education that you can get, the better off. Now, there are a lot of details about your situation that I don't know from the question you've submitted. So that's why I'm really suggesting that you talk to somebody who is an expert in this area, someone who is not going to charge you money for giving you some sort of advice or direction. I think that's a really important step to take. I know that debt consolidation loans are tough when your credit score is low. Plus, they usually require that you have a very strong income to compensate for your credit score. So, In most cases, I've seen people denied consolidation loans where their score is 650 or below, or they've had collections or late payments, which seems really ironic because a lot of the times that's why you're trying to turn to debt consolidation is to help you get out of the very expensive credit card debt. It's a bit of a dance. Getting your credit up high enough to where the consolidation will accept you But first, I think it's really about talking to someone who can give you good advice for the steps that you need to take first. So keep your head up. I know that this is a tough spot. I've been in tough spots myself. I have helped a lot of people that are in similar tough spots. The more you can calm your mind, the clearer you're going to be able to evaluate options. And really, it's about taking baby steps every day. So just to keep making these smart money decisions that you are making right now. And I promise you, your credit score is going to go up and your debt is going to get paid off. So I encourage you to reach out to Michael at Resolve or some other company, maybe it's not Resolve, but some company that's not going to charge you money to give you some sort of direction, but they're going to really look at your specific situation and help advise you so that you can make smart choices going forward. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app 
and verify your paycheck, then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet, finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Hi, I'm Karina Bemisterfer, host of Morning Cup of Murder, your daily true crime podcast. Yes, you heard me right. Daily true crime. Every day, Morning Cup of Murder tells you a straightforward, short-form story about murder, true crime, cold cases, disappearances, serial killers, cults, and more. And I do that all in under 15 minutes. With over three years of stories and over 20 million downloads, the Morning Cup of Murder podcast has become a staple of so many people's daily routines. So, why not add it to yours? Stream Morning Cup of Murder everywhere you listen to podcasts, and remember, stay safe. Well, and I think there's even, I talk about this a lot with money, that people get stuck in 
just I'll use simplistic example, the hated word budget. So Mm -hmm. we've now created this uh, story around budget that it's boring and it's it's means I can't have things in life. And we've created this whole story around it. And so I tell people. Well, if you hate the word, change the word, Right, change it to something. So, I, you know, that you're giving sort of that same freedom with the word therapy. If coaching or whatever that word is sounds better to you or to whoever you're talking to it about, then who cares if it's helping you? That's a mindset uh, shift, if you will. And one of the things that I see with people is that uh, when when they when they get into this these situations, they will ask other people all kinds of questions. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, right. it's like okay, girls so, are really good at that. Yeah. Too. Okay. Well, <laughs> who can I find? Do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. And and the advice you're going to get is advice that you want to hear. Typically, most people don't want to hear what they don't want to hear. Yes. So they're going to go find somebody to tell them what they want to hear. Okay, well, what you think and how you acted got you here. Why would you continue the behavior? Because we have a definition for insanity, and that is continuing a behavior expecting a different result. But if you walk in here, see people, the, the interesting thing about people who go to therapy, they do not walk in the door after their first fight and say, we're not doing well. Could you help us? Yeah, it's after like the <laughs> yeah, it's down the road, whatever. and it's like I am so done with you, <laughs> you know. So, oh yeah, we're supposed to go to therapy. Somebody said that. Okay, let's go. And you know, it's like if you can't fix this, it's you know we're getting a divorce. It's like we'll swell. So when when do you ask for help? That's a good question. Okay, it's a really good question. <laughs> My recommendation is ask for it early, because if we can fix it early, if we can if we can give you some tools to work with. If you can figure out how to care about somebody, you don't, the the reality of therapy, uh, and you can figure out what you want to do with this, but if people sat down and talked and listened, most therapists would be out of business. Very true. So why don't we do that? You know, is, what, that we, is that we don't want people to see us? There's all kinds of reasons right. behind that. It's like, number one, <clears throat> I don't want people to judge me because there's something wrong with me. This may come as a shock to you, but sometimes people want what they want. No. I know. <laughs> um, being somewhat selfish and self-centered, if you don't do it my way, then I don't like you. Yeah, we see a lot of that rhetoric lately in a lot of different places. Lots of places, you know. And I'm right and you're wrong. Right, because somebody has to be right and somebody exactly. has to be wrong. Yeah. So one of the things that, that an exercise that I have for people is, and I'll do it with you. Do you like even numbers or odd numbers? Even. Even numbers. Okay. So every even day this coming week, you're absolutely unequivocally right. And Jeff is absolutely unequivocally wrong. Okay. Okay. Now, on odd days, he's right and you're wrong. Think that'll work? Probably not. Probably not. There's okay. Seven days, a so I yeah. see one problem. Already. <clears throat> yeah. So this now, see, it's unbalanced and all these other things. But see, the problem that we face is that we expect people to see it our way. So you're supposed to say, since I'm right, you're supposed to say, "Oh my gosh, you're right. I don't know what happened to me." Hmm. The problem with this, we got two people saying exactly the same thing. I'm right, and you're wrong. So being wrong is a personal thing. Back to defective, you said earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm going to therapy because I'm defective. Well, no, I'm right. So why would I go to therapy? Because the therapist might tell me I'm wrong. I don't know that I want to do that. They're going to ask me to change. They're going to brainwash me. And do I really want to pay someone to to do that? Yes. (laughs) Right. I want to move on to something a little bit more serious because there's this trend happening probably in lots of different areas but um i see a lot with money where there's uh, i won't even say an age demographic because i think it's probably pretty universal but you know money i would say is this thing that touches every aspect of our lives it's it's you, it's hard for you to name something that you do or experience in your day that isn't somehow wrapped around money so when somebody mm-hmm. is in 
in debt or, you know, student loan debt, or maybe they got laid off from their job and there's no savings. And it, there's that, that fear and that anxiety that really wells in people. There's a trend of, of suicide related back to money. And, you know, you sharing your story about uh, alcoholism and, and getting sober, for somebody who's listening and maybe they're in that place where they're feeling like there's no way out. Right. How do they take themselves, even just taking the step from that place, to get them to somebody who can maybe help them in that place? Like, how did you how did you get that moment? Like you said, you tell forty five. Like, why wasn't it forty two or yeah? Why wasn't or- it? And how come October twenty third? And why not January one? And all the other questions that we ask. That is a universally uh, troubling question because until there's a there's a phrase in 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 recovery you're, you're not done until you're done why October 23rd I don't know why October 23rd but that was the day because nothing critical had been happening there was no huge red alert there was today. nothing I mean it's just like okay I don't think I want to do this anymore I didn't know how not to right. So um, I I had a friend who was going to AA, and so I called him up and I said, um, I think I want to go to a meeting, but you have to buy dinner. <laughs> and he said, okay. And so he did. He bought dinner and we went to this stupid meeting. <laughs> it was so funny. And I listened to all these people whine. And I thought, well, I don't need this. I'm not one. Yeah. No, I'm not one of those kind of people because I have a job and I have a house and I have a wife and I have, and you know, like I'm, I'm above this. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was on a Wednesday night. The following Wednesday, I called him up and I said, okay, you're buying dinner and we'll go to the meeting again. And he said, oh, oh, okay. I learned to hate okay. Mm -hmm. Because okay stood for something. And I'll explain that in a minute, but. So we went to this stupid meeting and I said, you know, this is so dumb. I mean, there's a bunch of losers. And so we're walking out and he said, here, let me introduce you to some people. He introduced me to uh, two attorneys, a businessman that I knew in the building industry. Uh, I knew who he was Mm -hmm. and introduced me to some people in the business world. And it was like, "Hmm." so as we're walking to the car, he said, so what'd you think of the losers? And it's like, okay, I don't think I like you right now. Uh, because we have a picture, we or we manufacture, we make up a vision of what's going on. You know, and I decided those people, you know, look at all those losers. In in my journey, I found out that we all have a story. And that story isn't terribly different. Yeah. And that story is somehow I got to a place where I didn't like who I was. I didn't like what was going on. I didn't. I didn't know how to connect with people in a healthy way. Grew up in an alcoholic, violent house, so I was not taught how to have healthy relationships. So I had unhealthy to deal with. So when it finally got to the place where I got to do this differently, I had no idea how to do it. So I did something very, very strange. I asked for help. I don't know how to do this. Can you help me? And they said, sure. So just talk to somebody. This is where I am. Um, we all, now I'm going to say, I would, people are going to argue with what I'm about to say. We have, we all have somebody in our world that would give us good advice. We may not, they may not be our best friend, but there's people in our sure, world sure. that they'll go, if I ask that person a question, they'll, they'll, they'll tell, tell me, me the, the truth. Yeah. yeah. Because here's what I figured out. If you're around people who want to hurt you, they're probably not good for you. <laughs> Yes. Okay. You go with that? Yes. But when I was drinking, who was I running around with? Not one of them said, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. Right. Um, There's a phrase called uh, buck a bag or a bottle. And if I had a buck or a bag or a bottle, you were my best friend. I was your best friend. We're just like, oh my gosh, because we're, (laughs) we're, we're like, but if you didn't. Forget it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's not terribly different in society. If you do something for me, we're friends. If you don't do something for me, not so much. That's disconnection. And that's why we we live in a very uh, tough world. Do people care about us in spite of 
or do I have to measure up? Do I have to have whatever? I don't know about you, but I do not drive the right car. I do not live in the right part of town. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I do have an office that's very close to the right part of town. Bordering on. (laughs) It's bordering on. (laughs) But see, we, we have these false visions of what matters. Where does that come from? I mean, does that come from childhood? Does that come from just our everyday interaction? How do those get cemented in you? Yes, two questions there. Number one is yes. Um, it comes from, I was told growing up that I wasn't valuable. I wasn't significant. Um, my mom my mom used to say some pretty horrible things to me. So the, the, it was very clear. That that's who you were. That I was not wanted, I was not valuable, I was not significant. Um, So alcohol made sense. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Doing a lot of things that got attention made sense. Going to jail was because I got somebody's attention. The problem with getting people's attention is uh, you will, there will be a reciprocal trade agreement. (laughs) So it depends on, (laughs) on what you're looking for. So the where that comes from and how it gets cemented in um if you watch tv do you use do you use the right hair care products do you you know do you buy the right clothes at the right store i mean do you do you and if you don't what's the message all that all that negative behavior Okay. Something wrong with you. Is there something wrong with you? Yeah. Because you don't shop where we shop. You don't have my perfume, so there must be something wrong with you. And we can bring it back to money, so then I must. Mm. There you go. So I need to go give of my money, and I need to go get that because because that's going to fix me. Right. And we figured out something. If it doesn't fix you, why do you have it? As I mentioned in the interview, I come from a family that didn't talk about therapy as a way to deal with life. Maybe you can relate. I wish really honestly that I had found therapy and counseling as a kid because I now know how helpful it would have been to me. I went through some experiences in grade school and then just some gunk through life where I didn't really know who to talk to. I didn't know how to express my feelings. And I did things like I went out and I shopped and I bought things and I put things on credit cards and I had credit card debt. And I I made, I made some choices that probably weren't great choices, but I did that because I needed an outlet. And I didn't think like, oh, I should probably go talk to someone or maybe somebody can help me figure this stuff out. But I really wish that I'd found it earlier, but I'm happy that I found it when I did. And I think one of the best experiences that I ever had in therapy, honestly, was this time that my therapist asked me to create this list of what I wanted my life to look like. And I took this assignment really, really seriously. I wrote down a list of about 30 things, and then I narrowed it down to my top 10, like the real core stuff that I wanted in my life. And I thought about my career. I thought about relationships. I thought about who I wanted to be as a friend. And for me, I thought about money. How much money do I want to make in order to be happy? Do I want to make millions? Do I don't care about that? Where do I want to live? So all of those things were really important for me to, to think through. And then my therapist and I, we went through this list and it helped me see what was truly, truly important to me. So much so that I have that list framed and I come back to it anytime I'm feeling not authentic to myself, which happens quite a lot. And another thing I just want to say is if you think you can't afford a therapist, Try things like asking them if they're willing to do a reduced rate based off your income or try an app like Talkspace, the one that Michael Phelps does commercial supporting, but don't let money be the thing that stops you. And therapy is just one piece, but you can try other things like meditation and hiking and yoga and eating healthy, connecting with nature, reconnecting with friends. All of those things don't cost any money, but they can help you get in tough money mental fitness shape. Whatever it is for you, I just want to encourage you to do more of it. On this podcast, we are really working hard to change our language around money to help others unlock the lives they want to live. Now that you are part of that movement, it's up to all of us to invite others. So share this episode with someone that you think really needs to hear this message about therapy. 
tell them why they should be listening to the Millennial Money Podcast and invite them in so we can all have these great conversations around money in a fresh, fun, and new way. Thanks for listening to this episode of Millennial Money. For all the behind the scenes on today's episode, make sure to check out the show notes. You can find all our episodes at mmoneypodcast.com. If you love this episode, share it with your friends and leave us a review wherever you listen to this podcast. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode.